Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be hearing about what life is like as a renal registrar from Dr. Mark McClure, who is a ST6 renal reg and vasculitis fellow at Addenbrooke's Hospital associated with the University of Cambridge. A registrar means sort of like a resident, like someone who is studying renal medicine as a specialty. And in this talk, Mark talks us through his slides that he made for a conference about life as a renal reg and talks us through what his days look like on the renal medicine ward, but also on the renal transplant ward. Um, and what sort of referrals he gets from GPs and from junior doctors. There's lots of jargon and stuff in here. So this video is aimed mostly at senior clinical medical students and junior doctors who are considering a career in nephrology or renal medicine. So yeah, I'll hand you over to Mark and enjoy the video. So hello, I'm Mark McClure. I'm a renal registrar. And I'm gonna to talk to you about a day in the life of a renal registrar and show you what we get up to on a day-to-day -day basis. So I've worked in quite a few renal units now. Some have been pretty big, some have been small, some have been somewhere in the middle. And while the roles and rotor and setup may be a little bit different, the job is essentially the same. So it's split between ward, clinic, referrals and procedures. So if we start on a day uh, on a general uh, renal ward, this normally kicks off around eight o'clock. Take your hand over, check in with the uh, dialysis nurses, make sure uh, that they know who needs dialysis that day and all the prescriptions are re ready to go. Then we're gonna do a ward round, see a wide variety of patients with various renal conditions, various renal problems. So for example, we're gonna see a 63 year old female with CKD who's overloaded, undergoing some diuresis. Then there's a 70-year-old female with rheumatoid arthritis who's now become nephrotic, and we're gonna to need to investigate her. 19-year-old young guy who has gone to a GP with a headache, um, found to have a blood pressure of 200, over 100, and a creatinine of 1,000. He's gonna to need to start uh, dialysis straight away, and we call these, these um, type of patients crash landers, and they can be quite tricky. Then there's a 31-year-old female, um, diabetic, some dialysis, looks like she's got a line-related infection and a bit of a dodgy beard in, in, in this icon, but that's fine, it's the 21st century. Then we've got an 80 year old chap with a problem with his fistula, thrombose, thrombose fistula, then a 69-year-old male who's undergoing treatment for vasculitis, he's had heavy guns, immunosuppression, cyclophosphamide, plasma exchange, uh, it seems to be starting to pass a little urine, showing signs of renal, renal recovery. So the a patient with rheumatoid and, and, uh, and nephrotic syndrome needs a kidney biopsy. That's one of the jobs of the renal registrar. We like to do these in the morning rather than the afternoon, just in case there's any, any problems or complications. So I peel off the ward round and uh, go and do this, the, the, the kidney biopsy. Then the chap with the thrombose fistula has no dialysis access. He's going to need a line. So after lunch, I insert a dialysis line in him so he can have dialysis later that day. Then the afternoon is taken up with usual jobs like checking bloods uh, and scans and taking, um, and taking referrals, answering bleeps. I'd love to say that the bleep only goes off uh, during that uh, short time in the afternoon. That's not true at all. It goes off from the minute you get there until uh, the time you hand it over in the evening. But you know, the day goes very quickly, very busy day, but normally we get wrapped up at about six o'clock. So a day on the transplant um, wards follows a, a similar format. I think transplantation is, is um, absolutely amazing. You know, transplant immunology and transplant nephrology is a fascinating topic. It's very rewarding looking after these patients, seeing them through their initial transplant um, and, and following, them, following them up in, in, um, in clinic. But they're complicated patients, especially immediately uh, post-op where they still essentially have kidney failure because the, the transplants take a little bit of time to work. Now they've had major surgery and now we've suppressed their immune system. So as a registrar, you've got to be sharp, you've got to be on the board, you've got to respond to problems qu um, quickly uh, and efficiently. So uh, in terms of the ward round, you're going to prioritize uh, your, your sicker patients that have recently had a transplant. And you know, there's also procedures that need to be done. For example, a kidney biopsy, the patient at the bottom um, three months post-transplant with a rising creatinine for no other reason. We need to rule out rejection in him, so he's going to need a, a, um, a biopsy as well. Then in the afternoon, you might review a patient that's been admitted um, from ED, check their bloods and scans, another busy day, but generally wrap it up by about six o'clock. 
So as renal registrars, we do kidney biopsies, and we learn how to do these from the start, from ST3, you can learn how to do kidney biopsies. You get pretty uh, good at them, and you're signed off as competent, probably by the end of ST3. It's a neat little procedure that we do, ultrasound guided. This um, picture shown here, uh, the angle of attack is a bit dodgy, actually. It's uh, that needle is heading straight for the hilum, where all the blood vessels are. Um, and there's a pretty guaranteed trip to interventional radiology for a uh, post biopsy bleed for, for this patient should be much more vertical. Um, and you can tell loads from the, the, the kidney biopsy. So uh, these are some of the histology slides. Uh, these are interpreted by renal histopathologists, but we do learn how to do how to interpret them as a uh, as a registrar. And um, uh, there's an exam that we do that has a bit, a bit a few histology questions in. And there's a biopsy meeting normally once a week, though, where we can review all the biopsies with, with, uh, uh, within an MDT. So we also do tunnel, we also do uh, dialysis lines. Patients need acute, urgent dialysis. We do non-tunneled um, dialysis lines that either go in the neck or, or the femoral vein. And for patients who need a more, uh, more permanent access, uh, while you know, their fistula isn't working, or the fistula is maturing, we can do tunneled um, dialysis catheters and you learn how to do this as a registrar and you can become pretty expert at this after you've done, uh, after you've done enough of them. So outpatient management of uh, renal patients is really important and as a registrar you start to learn how to work in a clinic. This is a di completely different skill set from working on the ward. Um, you've got to learn to see uh, you know, lots of patients quite quickly but be efficient, be thorough uh, um, uh, uh, as, as well. In a general nephrology clinic you're going to see loads of different causes of, of chronic kidney disease. For the new patients focusing on diagnosis and then you know, disease specific treatment, uh, there may be various immunosuppressive therapies for the immune mediated kidney diseases. And then uh, really the key to um, uh, CKD clinics is trying to slow down progression uh, of, of, the, of, of the renal disease. And the cornerstone of that is blood pressure control with Rasplicade, ACE inhibitors, and uh, ARBs. Also treat the complications, treat the comorbidities, and then plan uh, and prepare for the future, which, is, um, which will involve renal replacement therapy for some of these patients. Similar idea for the transplant clinic, but the focus here is really on the, on the graft and the graft function. You've got to know uh, what the complications are and when they arise, so you can ask about them, look for them, screen for them, and then respond to the patient. I really enjoy transplant clinic because it it allows you to have a bit of a more overview of, of the patient. You can be a bit more thoughtful uh, and you can really think about what's going on. Well, one thing I found is that you realise when you transplant clinic, there's lots of stable transplant patients with perfectly functioning um, grafts that you just don't see on the ward. So when you only work on the ward, you see the patients with the complications of the transplantation um, that are having, are having recurrent admissions. You get a bit of a skewed, skewed view. So by doing both, you get to see the overall picture. And I, I, really, I really like that. So finally, the referrals and reviews. The bleep goes off a lot. And you, the one of the jobs of the registrar is to give advice, um, which is difficult at first because you're not used to doing it. But after a while, after you've given the same advice 20 times, you start to sound pretty confident. Um, you know, you again get calls from the dialysis unit. The nurse, so this example, nurse in Riga's on, on, on dialysis. This patient's gonna to need to be transferred to ED, um, blood cultures, intravenous um, antibiotics. Sounds like they've got a, a sepsis probably related to some dialysis access. We get a lot of um, questions and queries from GPs. The vast majority are, are, uh, are completely appropriate. Some are, are less so, um, but you've got to always, always keep it cool and, uh, and, and be polite. The call from uh, the haematology reg with the patient with oliguric AKI. This patient needs an urgent renal review. Um, so I'm going to go see this patient, do a fluid balance assessment, optimise the circulating volume. If things don't get worse, he's going to need an, he's going to need an emergency um, line and, uh, and, and dialysis. And then, you know, the guy, the young guy, whose creatinine is racing off to 350, active urinary sediment. This is the kind of case that got me interested in, in renal medicine. You know, the rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, the hot kidney. This guy's going to need a, a, a vas urgent vasculitic screen, kidney biopsy, and you might even consider pulsing this guy with um, IV methylprednisolone. So I've crammed a lot into, into one day. Clearly, um, 
you know, this is it's, it's hard work being, being a, a renal registrar and it's, it's a more intensive specialty than others. But, you know, with that comes the reward. And I really feel that the, the breadth of patients we see, really interesting conditions and, and, and the variety more, more than um, makes up for it and, and provides a lot of uh, job satisfaction. So for anyone considering becoming um, a renal registrar and a career in, in renal medicine, I would thoroughly recommend it.